What's going on, everyone? This is Michael Stewart Isaacs. And this is Shemek Ebony. And this is your next edition of Sunday, Sunday Stacks. Stacks. We're excited to give you all the next edition of the series. And we have some great topics for you today. But first, the topic I want to get into most is a unique concept I call, I gave you money. Now, if any of you understand what I mean by I gave you money, it's that feeling that you get whenever you deal with somebody in your life that has given you some kind of money or cash prize or any type of thing, or even when you have a job and your boss feels like they own you. <laughs> Essentially, we have that spirit in our country in terms of how capitalism is deployed that as soon as I give you money, do you own me? I pose that question to you, Mr. Mecca. What do you think about this concept? Ugh, I think it just sounds bad. It feels bad. Um, it feels like a transaction that uh, I learned in my trauma of money course this week is non-consensual. So there is a monetary transaction that the ownership of the outcomes is non-consensual and it's harming us in our relationship with money. And I agree. I think what we have internalized is that as soon as someone exchanges money in any form, whether you're at a restaurant, um, we also know what other things are called when money is exchanged. People create this attitude of ownership of the person, whether it's their time, whether it's the actions they believe that person owes them for the money being given. Even when we go to the mechanics, you name it, anywhere we exchange money, we all create this possessionary, I own you now. Because I've given you this exchange of money. And you owe me something. And you owe me something. Oh, owe, owe, owe me, me back, back like, like you owe uh, your tax. Uh, owe me back like 40 acres to black. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, shout out to yeah, Nas and back. Genuine. That <laughs> throwback. But no, but truly, this is what we get is, is that spirit of someone owing someone. You know, you buy someone a meal. You do something. Like, if I give you money, I now own you for the time that the value of the money should be worth based on the thing. And I think... You know, we have to have a changing attitude. I think we're moving into a changing world, a changing economy. And I think the attitudes towards how we exchange money, outside of just being an entrepreneur, outside of capitalism, the way we just treat money and the things we're willing to do. I mean, we kill people because of money. Like, we have such this possession to this currency at a level of the most heinous to sometimes just feeling like you're deserving of a certain level of service. And, you know, the question is, we pose it to you all as an audience. We're just posing the topic. We want you to comment in the, the chat. Let us think, get your ideas about that feeling of, I gave you money and now you owe me something. Because this does impact how we interact with other people. Uh, when When people want to gift us, uh, we look at them like, what's the catch? And uh, there's a lot of cultural references that we grew up with that leans into this voice. Our gut tells us in that capacity when it's a moral or values uh, compromise that comes with that money and uh, whether or not we're doing it for survival or for our people or for community or for ourselves. Uh, it's something to think about. And I go one level deeper in regards to just the taxes, right? You get into a space where you work for money and then all of a sudden, even if you win money, I don't know if anyone out here has ever won a lottery right. or some kind of where scratch you at? off, where you but at? anytime you have those moments where you think you just got this money, all of a sudden you get that 1099 or something telling you <laughs> that, you know, now you owe some money. And essentially I think, you know, we have to think about that in regards to just the practices of money and how this looks like us going in the future. I'm not one of those crypto people um, in regards to saying that's where we're going, but overall our relationship with money, how it's affecting families, mental health. We have enough data, we have enough research to understand that this I gave you money phenomenon, whether it's to a landlord, whether it's, I mean, look at landlord, look at rates right now in terms of rentals going higher and higher and higher. I mean, we, we have this unique relationship with money in our society. We have this unique relationship in teaching people how to go get a hustle, be an entrepreneur. But again, we don't really sit here and look at the changing attitudes and behaviors of this thing called I gave you my money. 
Now what do I get for it? What entry do I get? What access do I gain? How do we change these attitudes in these times, Mike? I think we look at the value of people. I think we look at the value of people's efforts and productivity in a whole new light and dynamic. I think part of like even what we're doing with I Am Brilliant, we're helping people to identify their brilliance to start to apply it to their communities, apply it to something entrepreneurial. But ultimately, what we're looking for is an environment where people know how to utilize their talents and their gifts and create like a reciprocation kind of culture mm-hmm. where everyone is kind of rising to the occasion of their talents and gifts. Everyone feels worth it in the society. I mean, even looking at education and everything, you know, we were doing an interview earlier this week um, on another podcast um, that was the what, the uh, the dad podcast. What podcast were we were on this week? Glad Dad. Glad Dad. Dad's in the Classroom so, podcast. Amazing podcast series, amazing hosts. Um, Dion Chavis and it was just an opportunity for us to really kind of expand our wings as an organization as I Am Brilliant and one of the things we were able to do is talk about reforms in education you know reforms in our current monetary policies and currency like we need to look at all these different aspects and realize that this attitude of I gave you money is very pervasive it's very poisonous on some levels and i'm a person who again loves the practice and the sport of business loves creating entrepreneurs and helping guide people create clever marketing all the above i love it It feeds my juices but the feeling that money is starting to create i was a banker once you know i used to count the vault you know it's like physical cash is dirty right you get sick literally and then on top of that it's just again the spirit that we create sometimes behind money what we're willing to do or not do so with that changing dynamic, Miss Boss Lady here is the person who's been all dipping her toes around all the big money, but she had a big time invite to go to New York City this past week. It was a quick turnaround, but she was able to make it happen. I would love for you to share with us here at Sunday Stacks. What was your experience like going to New York and what was the occasion? Oh, wow. It was literally a New York minute. It um, was a great opportunity through the service that we have with Black Girl Magic Market. Our partnership with Black Innovation Alliance had a an open door and a seat at the table for New York City Mastermind with some financial advisors with UBS to talk about our um, financial service organization with the work that we do with building capacity with Black Girl Magic Market and other black um, business owners here in North Carolina and across the country. So to be able to take our challenges to the most seasoned financial advisors of, of the high end of $7 billion <laughs> capacity um, was a pretty uh, large space to be in but so humbling and and appreciative of the experience to be able to walk away with some energy to charge us to make our organization better and stronger and then make the entrepreneurs that are connected to us thrive as well look at that i mean we are out here a part of the trailblazers that are brilliant leaders across different spectrums really trying to create and shape a new reality in regards where participation in creating cultural experiences, creating corporate cultural experiences, different things are starting to manifest. And to see you go out here and lead our company in this space and create the relationships based on one of our subsidiary operations, it's an amazing feat to see what you've accomplished. Mm -hmm. I'm very proud of you and all the other women that you work with. I hope that it's a changing tide in regards to the response mechanism when it comes to our corporate leaders as well as the people who have the money because, you know, sometimes we confuse the people who play with other people's money who are wealthy Mm -hmm. with being the people who are wealthy. Mm -hmm. And so that's a cautionary kill when I think about um, sometimes us as a culture, as black people. I think I always used to say in speeches that, you know, we as we're the only people who came to America with value attached to who we were as a people. And even though we want to look at the different aspects of what being in bondage was about, being slaves, the value of who you are still never left who you are in any of your ancestors, but it's locked in our talents and our productivity. And I think that's something that, I, you know, looking at entrepreneurship, I always say to us, let's own our productivity, let's own our mm-hmm. talent in a way that we can really grow and thrive. But interestingly enough, I had a great conversation um, online with a gentleman by the name of Brett 
underscore EBITDA, at Brett underscore EBITDA. And he is a, you know, a newer social media influencer speaking on financial literacy things. But he posed an interesting comment in regards to Jay-Z's involvement uh, with the liquor industry and the different things that Jay-Z brings to the table as an entrepreneur that has been able to foster his position in a lot of rooms, kind of like big time Miss Shemekka Ebony over here, you know, going into these amazing rooms and being able to be an advocate for her work and her work that is connected to so many other new leaders in different communities as a representation. Um, it's amazing to see it. So Jay-Z has done that same thing for the hip hop community. He's been able to go into corporate America be somebody who they can bet on in regards to his return on investment and his ability to be a marketer and talk to a fan base. But part of the conversation that I said to Brett in the chat when we were having conversations in the comments, I made a comment in regards to the true currency of Jay-Z, like I would say most black people, going back to even the root of Jay-Z's name being jazz, right, jazz music here in culture, is that black people have one superpower, one currency that most other cultures don't have at the same rate that we do, and that's the currency of cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> black people's currency has always been cool. So what do y'all think? As I, t again, was commenting with the social media influencer by the name of Brett Ibada, he made the comment in regards to just Jay-Z's biggest acclimate, and I stated that Jay-Z's greatest asset, again, is his ability to connect with the feeling of cool. He makes things feel cool. And I, it didn't matter if it was a luxury item. It could be a uh, affordable item. As long as the cool feeling is there, kids and consumers will always want it. And we always bring it, whether it's Michael Jordan or whoever you may see that has influenced as Michael Jackson, etc. If it's cool, it's not about it being luxury that makes it aspirationally for people to want it. It's that we as a people have always brought this unique value to things that other cultures have sometimes seen us do. And they want us to do it for them in endorsements and those things. But now as we're growing into our entrepreneurship, we have to start owning our cool, owning the brands, owning the products we're developing and not just marketing and really get into these warehouse spaces and everything else to really start to build into the economy and own industries that we really can utilize our cool in in so many unique ways beyond just what hip hop has shown us. Um, and that's always been my vision. That's uh, powerful. You know? Something that illuminates to me and something that I learned along my way, um, thanks to you and, of course, the uh, the wonderful Jay-Z with the lyrics, I'm a businessman, <laughs> uh, it brought out to me to go after believing in yourself. My firm is my business. It's my, my name. It's a brand. Uh, and I will bet on myself any day. And that is um, leaning back to what you said about cool as a currency. Um, it's a vibe. I'm a vibe. And I want you to understand and experience my value, um, even if it means a monetary exchange for I own that and I'm going to own what my value is worth. I'm not going to allow some other outside company to determine that without me being at the table. I love it. And I think that's the key is just making sure that our value is always seen. But I think we're now at a point where we as a culture are starting to cultivate our value through the HBCUs, um, how we're starting to value them as institutions of learning, as we're all trying to work on our Shark Tank-ish levels of startups and you know start to build into businesses. We also have to look at our morals. We have to look at other standards that we want to start as a culture, as a community, um, as we're leading the charge. And we're happy to do that here at Sunday Stacks. Part of what we talk about is family, community, and company, which is principles of the I Am Brilliant. And we're super excited in regards to sharing these ideas. One of the things I wanted to elaborate on in our last segment was the concept of EBITDA. EBITDA being something that, um, so this is going to be an educational moment. EBITDA actually is an acronym for something that stands for Earnings Before Interest, Taxes, Depreciation, and Amortization. So that's a concept in most corporate spaces that we want to make ourselves accustomed with. And it's spelled E-B-I-T-A, I mean T-D-A, E-B-I-T-D-A, EBITDA. Look it up. 
Google it. It's your friend. And definitely learn some of these things in regards to when you're structuring and building your business. These are methods that can help you to understand how to play the game that other cultures and other people are aware of when it comes to the growth of their business and how to protect their assets over time. And we should be aware of these things as well, too. So wanted to share that little quick tip. So now to go ahead and give us a quick pivot, we want to talk about what we want to start calling the Wiz of the Week. <laughs> Shemekha Ebony is going to present to us the Wiz of the Week, sponsored by our Divorce Talks. <laughs> <laughs> that is too hilarious. So this segment we're introducing because we want our community to be very aware of uh, weapons of mass distraction. And if you don't know the cultural references of the Wiz, go back and look at it. Now here's my theory, and you're going to be, this is the, you've heard it first here. But I want to give you a good, strong foundation so that when you hear these Wiz of the Week, you can be prepared to be on guard, to keep your mind protected and your peace intact. The Wiz effect is based on, if you remember in the movie, uh, the people were moved by a collective and whatever was announced by the Wiz is the color of the week. That's what everyone was talking about, going after, lifting up, having discussions. Now, they had no control over which color was what, and the Wiz got to control what color was happening, and this all showed you what we see happening day to day. So, our... Uh, Wiz of the Week is Will Smith and Jada Pickett. Yes, sponsored by our Divorce Talks. <laughs> so, as all of you may know, we are doing a series in regards to Divorce Talks. Not that we are planning divorce, but we want to look at divorce in new, healthier ways. And what not a better way to discuss our concept of the Divorce Talks and our theories of how couples are looking at new ways of living, doing what we want to call traditional marriages. Things are starting to be changed. The blended families are starting to appear. People are on their first, second, third marriages. There's so many different things. So mm -hmm. this week we found out that Will Smith and Jada Pickett for the last several years have been together but not together. This entanglement goes deeper than just simply being a, they were, you know, uh, cheating or anything. They were just apart. And they had their own autonomous right to date and see who they wanted to while still choosing to be legally married to one another. And a lot of people had opinions on it. And mm -hmm. so here at Sunday Stacks, we're not here necessarily to give our opinion on it. But we're here to understand as we, we understand there are challenging ways and new ways that people are starting to display through social media and all these different ways of getting into one another's lives of how they chose to live how people are choosing to be married, not married, unmarried, all these different arrangements that people are creating. And we want you to put some notes in the comments. So we want to hear your opinion and what you think about Will and Jada, as well as some of the other topics as well, too. But ultimately, Shemeka, what are your thoughts? Well, I, I think this is a weapon of mass distraction. Let's celebrate them for the great actors that they are. Whatever they're doing in their private life is what they do in their private life. But you all keep falling for the okie doke. I mean, this is crazy how much energy was put into the timelines. You all are paying attention to things that you can't afford to have an opinion on. So let's redirect, let's not get distracted by this color of the day and stay focused on things that you need to do to mobilize, to get to your next level. You, there is no legacy if you don't put the time in. There's no generational wealth if you don't put the time in. Focusing on a celebrity that you won't even touch in your lifetime is a waste of, of energy and innovation that you could be putting to something else. And this mass distraction has put us in a place that's posturing us not to win, be successful, be well in our heart, is to be mad over something that somebody told you as the color of the day and you fail suit. Don't be upset with yourself. No shame, no shade. Just know that this is what the Wiz of the Week is for the week and know that there are more that are coming. So pay attention and be on guard and don't get distracted. 
So with that, we will wrap up this edition of Sunday Stacks. As always, we enjoy you all listening. We hope you leave. Oh some wait, 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 wait! We got to We got to make sure we don't miss this because we're gonna close the Will and Smith segment with what we know he taught us. He taught us this back in the nineties oh, on his show. Oh, all right, now when he gave that lesson to Ashley on what she needed to do, what what did she say? What did he tell her to do? The count of three. One, two, three. Mind, mind your business. business. Just mind, mind your business. business. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, we will officially wrap up this edition of Sunday Stacks. Please leave your comments, like, and subscribe on this YouTube channel and any other platforms you are listening to this on. And we thank you for this. As we always say to close every episode, I, I am brilliant. brilliant. You, are you are too. too. Thank you for listening and have a good one.